Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts every single day. Got a pick of the week for you here. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick the Avs to win their next game because I think Lekkonen's going to be back. I think Helm's going to be back. And we saw how much of a difference just getting Val back tonight made. So take the Avs. We're back on the Avs betting train officially over at DraftKings. Go over there. When you sign up for a new account with code DNBR, you bet $5 on any NHL team to win their next game. You get $150 in free bets if they do. So that's a great deal right there. Be sure to use the DNBR code. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. Other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. See the show notes down below. For details, of course, if you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 Four seven hundred. Avs unfortunately drop this one two one in the shootout, but they do get a point. And I honestly think, at least for me, Megan, you can disagree if you want, but it's going to be pretty positive vibes on the show tonight for me. Yeah, and I know it's our job to find ways for the Avs to improve, but we've and we just will. been looking for positives to build on, and there were a lot to take away from this game. So. Agreed. Also positive from my end. I, there's no reason not to be, given the getting Val's back is great. We'll talk about it. Still a lot of question marks in this lineup, though. So a point is a point, and it's one more point than the Avs have gotten in the last three. So it's a step in the right direction. 60-second rundown. I'm ready. Let's go. First period was maybe the Avs' best period of the game. The clock's not working. I don't need Oh, there it goes. Uh, The Avs do get the one goal to take a lead on a perfectly executed play off of the faceoff. Miko with the finish. Again, probably the best possession period for the Avs. The second period, probably New York's best period of the game, but the Avs still kept up. They did not get caved in by New York's counter push. They do end up giving the goal on a pretty bad pinch from Anglin in the offensive zone. Braden Snyder finishes on the odd man rush the other way. Those were the only two goals of regulation. Third period, honestly, I thought the Avs did everything right to win this game in regulation, except for finish plays. They just couldn't put one in the back of the net. But other than that, I really don't have a problem with the underlying way they played their systems tonight. Overtime was also very, very solid from Colorado. Great possession. And then the shootout. Yeah, Panarin and Zibanejad are good. Abs lose. We'll get into the shootout, too. People are absolutely bemused (laughs) at Comfer as the skater. First out. So we'll get into it. We will once we get there. We'll start in the first period, though. And, and really, we'll start with Val here because I think it was immediately apparent how much of an effect he had on the roster. Megan, what would you like from Val and what do you think he helped the team with? So many things, but I liked that he didn't seem to play with any fear in his game, any restraint. We talked a little bit how maybe there was some rust and just decisions that get made, but you're still seeing him get to the net front. And honestly, it's him being at the net front that is a great screen on that first goal from Miko Rantanen up high. And so seeing him get to the dangerous areas, skate really hard, compete really hard, knowing that it was an ankle injury that he's recovering from, it just it reinforced that he is healthy and he looks good. And once he gets back into more games, he'll adapt to that pace. I think he'll snap back really quickly just because even with the rest, the impact that he had was felt throughout the entirety of this game, all the way through the overtime period. But it just, it carried the top six in a necessary way that they haven't seen in a long time. It helped to split up the power play, which we really didn't get to see tonight. Other, just the one. Of just yeah. one, right? Uh, but it was great to see what he contributed to five on five, which honestly, this game was a great reflection too of what the Avs are able to do just five on five because it's what we've needed to see them do. Shots ended up 42 to 29. I think that does include overtime, but still. I, more traditional what you're used to seeing out of the Az when it comes to puck possession style of hockey. And, I mean, let's face it, the one line that did get the job done was that top line. Having Val out there, another threat that other teams have to respect, gives Miko Rantanen 
that extra six inches in the middle of the ice, pucks in the back of their net. Still hard on the forecheck, still causing problems. Yep. It was good to see him back. Great point. I, and the, there was no slowing down either. Valve causing a turnover all the way towards the end of overtime exactly. with the forecheck play. That's so. exactly what I was thinking of, how yep. important that is. So uh, genuinely long way to go for the Avs still on the injury front, but even getting just one top six guy back. One, you can see how much better it makes them. Two, it gives you an appreciation for just how down and out they are when it comes to injuries. Because Val, you know, you could make an argument that he was the second best player out injured for the Avs right now. Certainly not as impactful as McKinnon. And you also have other key contributors there. So <laughs> you add four more dudes of in the ballpark of Val's caliber of player to this team. And you feel like the Avs probably run away with this hockey game. It was a huge relief to see what influence just Val had in this depleted Avs lineup because knowing that eventually a McKinnon, Landeskog, Lekkonen return to this forward group yep. gives you a glimpse at a top six that is going to help them unimaginably. Yeah, it, it's incredible how quickly you forget how big of a difference those guys can really make. So, obviously it worked out in the first period. Um, and, and I don't want to discredit the depth guys. They were playing good hockey too. It's not like they were getting swallowed by the Rangers either. The uh, the third line, whatever you want, the Comfort, Cogliano, O'Connor line, great on the forecheck all night, did a very good job of possessing pucks in the offensive zone. We'll get into the Avs' inability to finish in a little bit, but again, process-wise, I think you take this game almost every night. Absolutely. It just started to look more balanced, too. With Nachushkin back in the lineup, we start to see Comfort, Cagliano, OC look like more of a third line. They're yeah. still playing up in what we normally expect them to be Definitely. but it's looking more balanced because that bottom six is a little more rounded rounded out and we are seeing guys eat up a little more time than we're used to to include a guy like foodie dryden hunt hudon they're helping in that i know they didn't get the win something to build on for georgiev though definitely i don't think it's a bad game from georgiev to agree it's hard by comparison because of what Shesterkin had to put up with on his end. The Avs were generating a lot of chances, so it was a really stellar performance from Shesterkin. It was. By comparison, it definitely doesn't shine for Georgiev, but it was still a good game. Yep. Really I... low scoring, just defending against, I mean, still some high-end, high-danger chances from the Rangers. Yeah, I, he stopped 28 of 29. I, right. Again, we'll get to the shootout, but... While the actual hockey was getting played, you can't ask for anything more out of him, for sure. Right. So, credit there. I believe we have a poll running right now. You can vote for Miko or Georgiev as the king of the game. You guys can pick tonight which one you want to see as the king. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get into that in a little bit once you guys have fully decided. <clears throat> Everyone's talking about it. Megan, you're uh, you're kind of the foodie queen around here at this point, so I'll let you take the foodie conversation. It's interesting because this is a very foodie game. He is very visible when he has the puck because he is such a dominant skater. That doesn't always translate to the best decisions with the puck, and so I think people are seeing the visibility component because he can evade guys really easily, slip in and out of tight spaces. He has such speed that he can also get to open ice really easily. These are things that he does really well. And then there's a little bit of the playmaking on display too. He had some nice passing and setups. Um, that I felt were really high caliber too. They're just, there was a lack of finish all around, so not always the right recipient for the pass. But on the whole, Foodie being the dominant puck carrier that he is because of his skating still needs to be met with a couple other things that I'd like to see more of, and that is getting to dangerous areas, having a more, we've talked about it, having a more high danger shot by himself too because but the things that he did well at the NHL level, I'm really proud of because these are things he does well at the AHL level that I'm seeing translate to the NHL, which is a huge credit to him. You know, to me, it, it kind of felt like 
he's finally starting to feel a little bit more comfortable at this level. And we saw that in terms of he made some really nice plays. I think he made a lot of really good decisions with the puck tonight. We also saw that in he's starting to test those limits a little bit. It comes to mind one play at the blue line where he dipsy doodles a little bit too long, ends up turning his own entry into a turnover, which I know is something he does struggle with at the AHL level too at times. Cronin has called it merry-go-rounding in the offensive ah, zone. And go. it on it, that's perfect. Yep. So he, it, it feels like he's taken a step. Now he's starting to push the boundaries a little bit. He's got to find the right spot to settle into. And, you know, going forward, I don't know who the roster spots will be, but some of those plays he makes tonight, if those passes are going to someone like a Lekkonen or even an Erod, the result might be a little bit better. Absolutely. And the other thing I want to give him credit to is the physicality component because it's something that he needs to lean into a little bit too. And I'm seeing him engage on the forecheck. And those are necessary things that he needs to do if he wants to play within an AV system because he has to be strong on that side of the puck too. I'm for sure. And I am, for the most part, avoiding the defensive zone conversation. It's just not something I'm going to hold against him right now. Not right now. Yeah, exactly. That'll come when it comes... For the moment, you're looking at the good sides of his game. Moving on to the second period here. I I don't have a lot of negatives here, so I'm, I'm curious. What are your nitpicks tonight, Megan? <laughs> I feel like lack of finish was the nitpick from the last is, game as well. For sure. Um, because they did a lot of things well otherwise right there wasn't really any special teams battle to evaluate from tonight yep. so we're really just looking at the lack of finish because i'm seeing a lot of guys step up generating chances that's all i could ask for too um and everyone kind of had a lack of finish that i'm not going to single any one person out like all right miko antonin you'd probably like to see a little more finish however he did score the only goal in regulation so it's so the difference between the other night and tonight is the other night you can chalk it up to, well, you know, the Evs didn't generate that many chances in the first place. So, sure, they didn't finish well, but they didn't have that many opportunities. Tonight, the Evs generated chances at a pretty high clip, honestly. Absolutely. It's it's just the reality of the, the situation. And it's not a complete, oh, nobody can finish, you know, Taves hits a post, JT Comfer has a couple of good chances that Igor just gets a piece of. And part of that conversation is absolutely Igor Shosturkin played great tonight. I wanted to add that part too. That's hard. It, it, sometimes you get goalied. That's just reality. Curious. But part of that conversation is uh, Charles Udon doesn't even get his stick on the puck because of a stiff lift on a two on half a player, essentially. Devon Taves gets a terrible pass from Miko at the end of overtime that turns a great chance into nothing. That's on Miko for the record, not Taves. But it's really hard to win hockey games if you can't put the puck in the net. Is this something the Avs can work on with this roster, or is this uh, they're just missing too many finishers? Uh, to a point, like looking at the top line from tonight, you could probably expect a little bit more uh, because it's not as lacking as we've seen it. But I, I don't know. I'm still making some concessions, especially for some of the depth okay. um, until these pieces really start to come together. For example, with the addition of just Lackanen, now in addition to Nachushkin, really different conversation. It's hard when the goaltender on the other side is Shosturkin. I feel For like sure. the conversation really does change when it is a different goaltender. Yeah, it's... And I'm willing to chalk up a good amount of that to Shosturkin tonight, but also, especially the Confers, Alex Newhook had a great chance in the third period yes. from the center area. Those are the guys that you're looking at and you're like, they need you to finish those. 
It made me think actually kind of a tangent, but Newhook, especially in the first period, the way that he was engaged in a couple of different ways, I wanted to give him credit for. For sure. Had the primary assist on Miko's goal, so exactly. it's not like he went pointless. But, boy, it's frustrating when it feels like everyone on the team is Matt Nieto right now and just can't finish. It is really frustrating. So, Because you asked me, do you think it's something they can work on with this lineup? Honestly, for the most part, no. And it's not anything against these guys. It's just bottom six players are inconsistent goal scorers. They, that's why they're in the bottom six. If they were consistent, they'd be top six players all the time. Right. And I, I posted it the other day, getting Val back actually makes this stat a little better, but roughly 40% of the Avs goals scored this year were by players on the injured list. And that doesn't even count the lost production from guys like Landy, who, who haven't even suited up this right. year. So they're just missing a lot of goal scoring still. That's just the reality of the situation. And it's, it's great if they keep playing like this. I would take this performance process-wise every night and the vast majority of nights I guarantee you they will score more than one goal but they're just in it right now definitely just one too many games of those goals not going in that it feels like they need something to break the the slump a little bit yeah I talked about it being more balanced but it's still not balanced enough throughout that forward group and so honestly they just need more reinforcements so that these lines aren't it's no demerit of the American League guys that are up with the team right now, but having entire lines of players of that caliber in your depth is hard. So uh, I did want to bring this up. I don't know if I'd call it a negative per se, but an oddity with the lineup tonight. Jacob McDonald getting moved to the forward spot and let's be honest, Bednar basically didn't use him at all. Yeah. Is he there just because of his flexibility, can play forward and D? What's up? Why didn't they keep Ranta in that spot or Cowder? Pick your prospect of choice in that spot. I think there could be a couple reasons for this. It could have been because of Nachushkin's status being very much game time decision. He's the easiest guy to plug in last minute like that, especially with the Eagles playing at home tonight. They don't necessarily want to pull ice time away from Ranta, have him here, not play, that kind of thing. That's my best guess because I still have a hunch though that they would have done this if those circumstances were slightly different. And I, I think they like the utility, but I also think that when McDonald does, okay, I shouldn't say when, but he will likely get reassigned when we start to see some guys return to health. He has to clear waivers, right? Yep. And I, I don't know how that'll go. I'm not saying I think he will be claimed, but I just wonder if they're a little nervous to, to do that. Why risk it? Right. I say that, but they also just waved count, so. Right. <laughs> and, but then the Megna thing happens. Yeah. So I, I wonder if there's some timidness there, having come so closely on the heels of Megna and we're not quite returned to health yet especially on the defensive side of things until maybe we know more. They don't want to part with McDonald. I think that's probably the case. I still wonder if they don't just try and hold on to another forward there. I would have liked to see someone like Ranta. I think they would have trusted him more. Yeah, I I mean, four minutes, you're basically just saying you're playing 11 forwards on that night, really. And we saw that. Newhook was getting double shifted at times. Miko, obviously. Comfer was taking double shifts. It was, a, it was a weird hodgepodge with those fourth line guys tonight. So it was just kind of a weird decision. I don't, again, not saying it's necessarily bad, just kind of odd. It was a little odd. On that note, we are brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DMVR. You can go to breckbrew.com right now. They're doing a giveaway called the Nice List for Christmas. Make sure you're on Santa's Nice List and you can get some amazing stuff from a Breck Brew for absolutely free. Go check it out, breckbrew.com. Also brought to you by the amazing people over at Foco, foco.com. You can go get your bobbleheads, your apparel, all sorts of licensed merchandise from the Colorado Avalanche, your other Colorado teams, and even teams around the country. I don't 
I'm not sure if they have like World Cup merch. They might have that too, honestly. They've got a little bit of everything. Their bobbleheads are their big seller, though. We were talking about it the other show. Avs need a bunch of bobbleheads with casts on them right now. Oh, no. That would be the uh, the big sell. Shipped with extra bubble wrap. Now, though, ooh, just never take it out just of the bubble wrap. Just never take it out, yep. Perfect. <laughs> Someone call FOCO and order just bubble wrap. Don't need the bobbleheads, just the bubble wrap. Check them out at FOCO.com and use code DNVR with them. You can get free shipping on whatever it is you order. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Third period of this game. Uh, no, no, back it up. Let's talk about the goal first against. Okay. It just feels like the Avs cannot escape the limitations of their roster right now. It, that is just a boneheaded pinch from Andreas Englund. Completely I, takes himself out of the play, leading to an odd man rush the other way. The Rangers, of course, capitalize. I don't... Is there something you can break down more than I can on this play, Megan? Because my, the only thing I have to say is you can't make that pinch. It's his priorities in the ozone there. He's completing a hit, but it's just not the right priority. And unfortunately, it does lead to a rush against. And you've got Panarin coming in on that entry, and he's kind of deceptive. I think that's what makes it hard then for Rantanen and Hunt to yep. defend against because the deception in the weight and the turn honestly threw a lot Rantanen and Brad Hunt off on that play. And it just... It was really smart of Panarin. Like, I kind of want to give him credit for that. But it's on. It's not to excuse Englund's decision in the ozone, which causes this. And the thing is, what you're saying kind of reinforces my point, I think. Oh, cool. You gave him an odd man rush to the Rangers. And the guy you have defending, Artemi Panarin. It's Brad is Hunt. Is Brad Hunt. You know you're in for a bad time. And it's, it's nothing against Brad Hunt. It's just the reality of those two guys' skill levels is too big. It, it's tough. You even see Miko sort of guiding Hunt yep. on what to do in that moment. And not a demerit of Hunt. It's just you, you said limitations. I think that's a, a smart word for it because that is just not a fair matchup for yep. that deep pairing to defend against that type of player. Yeah. Again, not even faulting the players. Okay, I'm faulting Angling a little bit. I think that was an actively bad decision that you could do better. But, again, the expectation can't be that those guys need to defend Artemi Panarin well because you're in for disappointment every single time there. So it's something the Avs just have to battle through right now. Someone in chat said England was okay tonight. And I actually did really like some of England's physicality, especially sure. in the first period, because the Rangers played a really physical game in what was a dominant first period for the Avs. And someone like England was a big part in going toe to toe with that physicality. And I did like that, so I don't want to no, skate not, by without saying I'm not saying even it. saying England had a bad night. He just had one really bad Costly, play. Costly, any yeah. low-scoring game with a netminder, Shesterkin, who's so good, hard to score against. It's just, you're right, it's the perfect equation for the small mistake to really add up. Yep. And, you know, I can put as much fault as that on that as I want. Hard to win a hockey game when you only score one goal. That's what I'm saying. It comes down to goal support, and it's hard right now for the Avs and the way the lineup's constructed. Yep. It, every every angle you want to look at that from, it's it's why I think we're both pretty okay with the Avs getting one point out of tonight. Completely. Instead of being frustrated that they lost the second point, you view it as a positive, say, hey, they really played a pretty good game, something to build on. At very least, you feel better about this team going forward than you did after the Boston game. So, again... Wanted to talk about the negatives, but I really don't think we need to go much further than we have on them so far. And I don't have much more to add because I, I really liked a lot of what I saw in this game. Agreed. I, I said I think the first period was the Avs' best. They didn't score a goal, but you could definitely make an argument that the third period was a better period. If I was ranking the periods, it'd be first, third, second, and the second period wasn't even 
bad. Right. Rangers just gained a little bit. They yep. they closed the margin between the two That's teams. a good way to put it. And, you know, again, I Charles Houdon had multiple great plays in the third period for opportunities. Puck just wouldn't go in. We've already talked about a number of the other options and chances the Avs have had. I don't... I don't even feel like... I put it... I feel like I've already been too harsh about the finishing tonight. Because it's Igor Shosturkin. Like, that dude does this to teams on a regular basis. Way better than Colorado is right now. So you just kind of tip your cap and move on with life. It's the way it is. Completely. Is there anything else you want to mention about regulation, or should we move to overtime? No, I think we go to overtime because it's kind of an extension of. Oh, I do want to give them credit too. They kill the lone penalty called against them. They did late third period penalty. That's an important period of the game. And I also like that some of the depth players were getting ice in this third in such a close game, and they were trustworthy with it. Trustworthy, I think, is the perfect word for Bednar tonight. And I'll, I'll use that cautiously. Because, you know, he the way that he deployed guys was still with caution. For but sure. you saw guys like Foodie in the third period getting entrusted with ice. And this is a tied game against a New York Rangers team with a great goaltender. I just thought that was, when I say it's starting to look more balanced, that's the kind of thing I'm looking at. And it, it's good to see it looking good because we've already seen the balance has become almost a necessity it's reached the point where guys like Makar are like I can't keep going like this I need to I need to limit the minutes a little bit right so it was gonna come either way and the fact that it looks good instead of bad it feels pretty good it does feel good <laughs> the overtime kind of weird all the way around you knew going in it was not going to be your usual sets of three for Colorado, given the lineup options they had. Uh, credits to Ben are willing to throw out 2D at times. Credit to JT Comfer, who had played a lot of minutes in that overtime, really doing a solid job. And then you had the, the rotating cast of guys, including Miko, Val, Gerard. Uh, there was another forward that I'm forgetting. Cogs, Cogs. was out there. OC, tiny bit. Just just a little bit. The one shift for OC. But, again, the Avs possessed the puck for probably, like, four of the five minutes of overtime. That was what I liked, the possession. And there was a close call with Cogs at one point. OC didn't really look threatening. But they still escaped OT, dominating possession, generating the most chances. Just the finish. Yep. And, look... You are, in overtime more than anything, I feel like it's such a huge ask of those guys because you you become accustomed to the best players in the world playing in overtime. So McKinnon goes out there and walks somebody like it's nothing. Kale goes out there and makes someone look stupid constantly. JT Comfort doesn't have that in the bag. He's interesting because... He's very reliable, Definitely. but you're not necessarily looking for him to be the overtime goal scorer. You're just looking for him to play responsibly. And I think it's an interesting strategy because then the, I think it separates and then there's Cogs and OC who are also not Ooh. posing the same threat that someone like McKinnon and Dutton yeah. and OT. And, and I, I really think the overtime was about as good as it could have been for Colorado not expecting those lineups to generate a ton of danger. Miko just doesn't execute on the pass to Taves in the dying seconds, and their one real good chance to finish this thing kind of slides away from them. I don't want to say that they played for the shootout, because I don't think they did. I think they were genuinely trying to win. But it's just the skill level just isn't quite there right now for situations like that where skill shines the most and that unfortunately carried over into the shootout as well which we'll get to in a second here but 
We are also brought to you by Athletic Greens. One scoop in your cup of water every morning. I might need a scoop tonight, depending on how this party goes through the rest of the night (laughs) here at the DNBR bar to get me through. We'll see. But it's got 75 different vitamins and minerals in it, a bunch of electrolytes and adaptogens. A bunch of athletes use it as part of their daily routine, both for their immune system and for their workouts. It's a great product. You can get it over at athleticgreens.com slash avalanche today. When you go over there, be sure to let them know DNBR sent you, and you'll get a free year's supply of vitamin D with your order. Take control of your health as a lot of people coming down with the flu lately, just throwing it out there. Athletic Greens boosts your immune system. If you're going out for a night at the bar, make sure you're taking the good stuff. That's all I'm saying. Well, again, athleticgreens.com slash avalanche. Uh, I don't uh, we're, I don't think we're officially sold out yet on party bus tickets for December 17th. I haven't been informed that we are. So. But there are, you can literally count on one hand how many tickets are left. It's so close. if you want to get in on the party bus, do it right now over at the dnvrlocker.com. You might genuinely get the last ticket. So jump in on that. It's the 17th. It's also my birthday. So we're, we're going hard. No matter what the hockey game looks like, before, during, after. We're going hard. <laughs> so come out for that. Have a great time with the DNVR gang. Just so you guys Should know, be fun. there will not be a watch along that game. No yeah, watch along. Of course not. I will be at the game. Going to be hard to do a watch along. <laughs> Unless you guys want to hear a soccer fan talk about hockey and how it should actually operate. <laughs> so. uh, all right. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. This one gets to the shootout. Mika Zabanajad and Artemi Panarin are pretty good. They're just really good. And I like the Zabanajad one. Yes, it's a great shot. Not faulting Georgiev at all. If you're asking him to stop one, it's that one. I look at that Panarin one and I genuinely go, does anyone in history ever stop no. that? Like I thought Zabanajad was good and then I saw Panarin and I said, oh, well, that was even better. So, it's uh, genuinely just disgusting. I was doing stink face on the watch along because that's so nasty. The other side of it, an interesting conversation. You were pretty confident Miko and Kale were going to be two of the three. It ends up being JT Comfer. Like the decision? I don't think this is the decision I would have made, but I'm not a Stanley Cup winning coach <laughs> that is true and so i can put my bednar cap on and guess what i think happened here sure. but it wouldn't have been the decision i make and i i go back to the way that i see bednar like to reward players and give players credit especially for effort and work ethic I, again i still don't know that i make this decision but it feels like it's to reward jt com for for solid work I reliable like your- in ot I like your generosity. I don't think it's a reward at all. I think Bednar needed his blankie and and went to old reliable <laughs> on that one. It, it wouldn't have been my choice. <laughs> Me either. But it's the choice they ended up making. Comfer does not finish. And again, not faulting Comfer at all here. Igor Shosturkin's really good. Right. <laughs> also stopped Miko Rantanen pretty handily. Yeah. <laughs> I see what Miko was trying to do. Yeah. But it just, the, it was oversimplified. And the move that he had last time with the Rangers in the shootout yeah. was simple, but there was a little more deception in the flick of the wrist. This lacked that, and it was already a simple move last time, and it was too simple this time, and it just wasn't complicated enough for Shesterkin. Well, just the fact that of what happened last time against Shesterkin and the Rangers... You, you don't make that work twice. No, and it, I loved it, for the record, the last time. Oh, it sure. It was awesome. But you use that move, and now walk it in on Shesterkin. You know in the back of Shesterkin's mind, he could do that again. It's way less likely to be as effective. Right. Would have liked to see a move out of Miko, for sure. Unfortunately, didn't really work out that way. And the Avs end up dropping in a shootout in... I haven't thought about this, so I'm saying this off the cuff. I could, 
go back and disagree with it later. But what might be the best loss of the season for the Avs? <laughs> the best loss of the season. I, uh, I also haven't thought about it, but I would probably agree off the cuff because the Avs haven't really been in this position where they're clamoring to get back in the win column yep. in this same way on the heels of the losses that they've had that have felt pretty bad, especially because of all the injuries that have led to them, that this still feels like a bit of a victory in ways. They get a point. It does to me, for sure, feel yeah. like a victory, basically. Uh, again, with the knowledge that help is literally right around the corner now, it gives you confidence that another guy or two gets them over the hump, right? It does. So I really do feel pretty positive about it. Uh, we got a couple super chats here, then we'll get to your guys' as king. Drew, once again, the absolute madman, giving us another $50. Proud of the guys for <laughs> scratching out the point and honestly probably deserved better. I also love how proud you can tell Mama Megan is of all her little eagles. That's going to make me tear up. <laughs> Who is the best eagle tonight, Foodie? I would say Foodie. Okay. And then $2 from Vaguely Sober saying, Foodie looked pretty fire tonight. The DNVR sweaty boy <laughs> meme. Sweaty boy meme. Thank you very much. We appreciate both of those. I, what, what was the poll result? I don't know. Who was the king of the game? I, I have no idea. Apparently it was Georgiev. Aww. Definitely a great choice. Gave the Avs a chance to win this one in regulation. And uh, yeah, even, uh, even with a better night, ultimately the Avs just didn't finish enough for him to get it over the hump. So... Hard not to feel a lot better than Wednesday night, to say the least. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Boston who? What? I don't know them. Uh, all right. Any final thoughts, Megan, before we get out of here for this one? Someone asked about the next likely guys to come back yeah. into the lineup. It's most likely Lackanen, Helm. Lackanen, it seems like, will probably be good to go Sunday. Sunday. Helm, soonish, and then probably not so far behind Helm is Erod. So yep. count on Lekkonen yep. Sunday, which is another top six piece, which is huge, right? So big deal, yeah. And all of a sudden, you have a top line that you're like, okay, I can work with this. Absolutely, this is fine. You have JT Confer and, and Cogliano playing against appropriate competition below that. Yes. It's just so much better so quickly when these guys start coming back. Absolutely. That's all I got. We're going to get out of here and go party with Brandon for the rest of the night. Go wish him a happy 40th on Twitter. We appreciate all y'all, and we will talk to you. I guess we're off tomorrow, so Sunday, Sunday afternoon, the noon game. We'll talk to you then.